And welcome into the Mullen Center for our UMass Basketball Summer Special as we're excited to bring to you some information on the new players and returning guys for Massachusetts basketball. And we start at the top with head coach Frank Martin entering his second season at the helm here in Amherst. Coach, good to see you. How are you uh, doing? I, I'm good. I feel like it's the middle of January, the one we're having to run our practices, but, uh, but I couldn't be happier. You've got a lot of new faces coming in. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about them throughout this show. But why don't you just start and give us an overview as to the, the makeup of this team and how you brought it together? Um, a year ago, uh, you, you, it's also a new team because yep. everyone's new, coaches, the players returning, whatever. And, um, uh, and we're, we were trying to figure all that out. And as the season went on, I thought we, for a first year, we were actually playing pretty well. and. We obviously won some games, went away from home, beat some good teams. Um, then we hit the injury bug, and we, we didn't handle adversity very well. You know, that's part of the season. It's not, it's not an excuse for how the season ended. I, I couldn't, I, I was embarrassed that last game we played. It's, uh, um, and I know our players were, Bert. But, uh, but with all that said, you know, we, Matt Cross, uh, Rasul Diggins, Keon Thompson, Ryan Marcus, um, Jackson Cronin, those guys that are that are back with our team, uh, they they fully invested. And you know, and a kid like Matt Cross, Matt was playing at an All A10 level uh, when he got sick at the end of January there, yeah. and and uh, and then he he you know he struggled to get back, and then he got on the court and then hurts his knee right away, and then he's out for another two and a half weeks or whatever it was. And um, but uh, I'm 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 really really happy, and these new guys have come in. These these returning guys now have a direction that they can teach these new guys. Like they Frank and his staff are going to work really hard at this. Uh, we need you to be a part of this, and uh, so that gives guys a direction from the word go. Something we didn't have last year at this time. It feels like Matt Cross is an established A10 yeah. player, and I mm -hmm. think a lot of folks saw that early on mm -hmm. last year. You've got Keon Thompson who really had to shoulder a lot of the starting yeah. role at yeah. point guard. What can year two be like for him? Yeah, I think Keon's taken a huge step forward. I, I, I say it all the time that it's, it used to be part of the fun of college basketball, or at least in college athletics, is watching a freshman become a sophomore. Uh, because they all come in as freshmen and they think that it's going to be a lot easier than it really is. And then the guns like Keon, which right in the middle of the season, because of injuries, that I, what I call the burden of winning, just landed directly on his shoulders. He went from a six, seven minute a game guy to helping us win, to a guy having to play 26, 27, 28 minutes a game, and the burden of winning being on his shoulders. And, and that becomes overwhelming sometimes. And by the end of the season, he was just like trying to survive, just keep his head above water. and. Um, but he, he's in a completely different place, as Rasul Diggins. Uh, also, something that goes unsaid sometimes, uh, those returning guys, now they've been under our strength and conditioning program for a whole year. You look at their strength numbers, you look at their bodies, you look at how powerful they've become now that they've been training the way we ask them to for a year. Uh, all three of those guys are going to make a tremendous difference on our team. We're going to hear from some of the players as well as we go forward on this show, but we'd like to let you know that season tickets for Massachusetts basketball are on sale now, and single game tickets will be available towards the end of September slash October. So we hope that you can check out UMassAthletics.com and get in on the action early. We're going to take a break here on the summer special. When we come back, we'll dive into some of the newcomers with head coach Frank Martin. That's next. When you need to dig, lift, move, cut, or just about anything else, then dial up the rental source staffed with equipment and construction experts. They'll help you get the right machine for the job and make sure it's delivered when and where you need it. With locations across New England and the newest and most reliable inventory, Milton Rents is your local source. Uh, when you almost die and come back, you can't look at the world the same way. A lifetime of mysterious health issues led to the discovery of a tumor in Kalia's heart. The tumor was on my wall over here, and it was going like this over my valve. So I wasn't getting proper oxygenated blood to my body for 
probably my whole life. Every beat of her heart was putting her life in danger. Watch her inspiring story at baystatehealth.org slash my story. You live once, life is short. That's a huge eye opener. Bay State Health, advancing care, enhancing lives. At Mass General Brigham Sports Medicine, you'll find sports medicine care driven by research and determination. Top specialists who understand your athletic dreams, goals, and the need to get back to them. Together, we'll write your comeback story. Start your comeback story today. And we're back on the Massachusetts Basketball Summer Special with head coach Frank Martin, learning about some of the new players coming into the program. And coach, transfers are the name of the game. You only have two this year. A lot of teams are 8, 9, 10 even. Yeah. Josh Cohen was a big name yeah. that you were able to land. He was a player of the year in the NEC out of St. Francis, Pennsylvania. Yeah. What does he bring to the table for your program? Yeah, it's uh, when the season ended or as we were coming towards the end of the season, uh, I don't overreact to the first week of the season or the first month of the season, but once you're entering the last week of the season, uh, you, you kind of are who you are and you can't hide from it. And a uh, um, big part of me, what I believe in offensively is getting the ball in the paint. We converted in the lower numbers in the country as far as converting paint touches into points. Uh, so I knew that was something we had to get better at. And uh, Josh is somebody Derek Kellogg had identified and uh, uh, DK, shout out to him. What a great job he did for us in his one year here. But, um, but you know, we identified Josh. And that first day we can go out, we went right to his house. Because the one thing Josh knows how to do, I believe the number is he shot the third most free throws in the country last year. And, uh, and he knows how to score in the paint. And we desperately needed that. And he's, he's uh, after a couple of weeks with us here this summer, it's obvious he knows what he's doing in there. 22 points a game yeah. last season. Mm -hmm. So certainly looking forward to see what he can do. And the other transfer you have coming in is from your old stomping grounds in yep. South Carolina and Daniel Hankins Sanford. He played one year uh, for the Gamecocks. Where does your relationship with, with him begin and what kind of player can he be? Yeah, we spent a couple years recruiting him down there in South Carolina and uh, got to know him and his family really well. Uh, I was extremely excited when we signed him at South Carolina and, and I was actually proud of him that he kept his word and, 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 and honored his commitment to university uh, uh, because part of the recruitment was about being closer to home and his family and uh, incredible mom. And um, so I, I was proud of the fact that they, they believed in the university enough to stay. But then a year removed, he chooses to leave. And, and again, the way I just explained to you about Josh Cohen, another thing we identified is I thought on the front line, we we're very unathletic. We had to get more athletic on the front line. Uh, and Daniel brings that. He's 235 pounds. I mean, he's a quick twitch, powerful, explosive athlete uh, that I think his best days are in front of him. And he's got a wonderful spirit. And, um, you know, we, we got to work. We got to make him better. Uh, he's got to grow. He's got to put in the time. And that's his side of the equation. And that's our side of the equation. Uh, the biggest thing we got to do is we got to help him regain confidence. Because uh, like all freshmen, not just at him in South Carolina, we just talked about Keon at our place. Uh, like all freshmen, uh, that year one is hard, and getting them to, to regain trust in themselves is a big, big part of the offseason between freshman and sophomore year. Those are the two transfers. Yep. Incoming, we're going to talk about the freshmen now. Yep. We'll oh start with here with Jalen Curry, who is ranked one of the top point guard prospects in the nation, mm -hmm. had plenty of offers at the ACC Power 5 mm -hmm. level. How does Curry kind of match up within your system and, and, and what does he look like in terms of his abilities? Well, he's a dynamic point guard. He's a, he's a guy that knows how to get other guys shots. And see, there's guys that can get other guys shots through structure. That means when I run a play and there's guys that can get other guys shots when the game is kind of open court and broken. He does it both ways. 
uh, extremely smart, extremely competitive, uh, um, just like like a just I'm coming at you, good luck guarding me mindset at the point guard spot. A very confident young man, very competitive, um, and uh, and then as we've seen here in, in the summer, he's going to get that ball in the paint and he's going to get people shots, and that's the that's a thing that we also identified that we needed on our team. Coach, looking forward to see how these guys mesh. Thanks so much. Speaking of Josh Cohen, we were able to track him down at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Here's part of that conversation. Not your first time at the Basketball Hall of Fame? No, I, I came with my father like 10 years ago, but yeah, was, second time. Was there a player or an exhibit that you were particularly excited to, to check out? Uh, I saw Larry Bird down there, uh, Michael Jordan, greatest player of all time, so uh, I was pretty excited. You're a Jordan guy? Jordan guy, 100%. Give us a little background as to you know what type of player you are on the court. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of different uh, aspects of my game. A lot of people try and put me in this box of, okay, he can, he can make some plays around the basket, stuff like that. Um, I feel like I can, I can bring a lot to the table in other, other ways. Um, Coach Frank's working on a lot of different things with me um, just to expand and broaden my game from last year. Um, and we've already started in the last two weeks, and I feel like such a better player. So um, I, I feel like I'm the kind of player who could really score the ball around the basket and you know, make plays on both sides of the ball. He's big on paint touches. Did he tell you that when you guys were recruiting him? I, I think so, yeah. I think so a couple times. Yeah. When you get to know some of these teammates, right, this has obviously been a pretty short amount of time for you. you know, what's been the vibe or the feeling like, especially with so many new guys on the court? The energy has been amazing. Um, I think a lot better than we expected. Like we have so much talent. It's, it's everyone in Division One has talent. It's how that talent comes together and can win basketball games. So me as a leader, uh, Matt as a leader, Keon, Basul, just guys that have done it before, have to take these new guys, bring them on board, and try and get, you know, they say in college basketball, the, the older you are, the better. But I feel like with this amount of talent we have and guys that can just play so many positions, we're gonna be really tough to beat come November. We know you're busier than ever before, caring for your children, your parents, or a loved one. And don't forget about yourself. You deserve a health plan that guides you along the way and helps you make the decisions that matter most. Health New England has options designed to meet the needs of everyone in your life. We'll be here for you every step of the way. Get a health plan that grows with you. Health New England, where you matter. What I'm most proud of the lottery is, you know, the more revenue we generate, the more we give back to our communities. Faxon Park is our memorial park dedicated to veterans. It's a source of pride in this town, and the lottery's helped us maintain that. There's a great sense of pride being able to work out of this firehouse, that aid from the lottery. It's very important for us. The ultimate winners are the 351 cities of towns. The Mass State Lottery, 50 years of supporting communities. 50 years of winning. And welcome back to our men's basketball summer special as we talk about some of the new players coming in to the UMass program. And we are privileged to be joined by associate head coach Alan Edwards. Coach, how you doing? Thanks for being here today. I'm doing great. I appreciate it. Before we get into these guys, <laughs> yep. 
give us a little overview as to you know maybe the personalities or the the, mm -hmm. the overall feeling that you've gotten from this team so far. Well, you know, in a short period of time, obviously getting ready for our trip over to Puerto Rico, uh, having some workouts, but also some full blown practices. Um, it's just a unique feeling, just the, the energy. I think there's an excitement uh, level uh, with the group that's coming in. Um, you know, we had seven high school kids, obviously a few transfers. Um, and I think they've done a great job of bonding mm. in a short period of time and utilizing uh, our practice facility on their own time to get in uh, and get up shots and get workouts. Yes, yes. Let's start with the biggest guy <laughs> coming in. Yeah. It's uh, Matuk Majuk from South Sudan. Spent yeah. a little time uh, prep year down in Bridgeport. Yeah. You know, seven foot three. Mm -hmm. How do you mm -hmm. start to manage a guy like this? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, he's a great kid. He's yeah. actually really funny. Um, uh, and he's, he's a kid that just you get joy when you're around him. Um, obviously, he's a foreign kid, uh, excited about the opportunity, um, eager to learn, um, eager, to, eager to get stronger uh, in the weight room and things of that nature. But I think he's uh, uh, something that you can't teach. 7'3", I think he has a, uh, an ability to protect the rim, block shots, even right now as a frame that he has, but once he uh, get used to eating on this campus, <laughs> put a little weight yeah, on, and uh, Coach Tony get some weight on him in the weight room, I think he'll be fine. It kind of felt like, just from what I've seen in snippets, mm -hmm. he's got that size, but he also has quite a bit of agility to go along with that. Yeah, he's, he's not, he's not slow-footed by any means. He actually runs like a deer uh, up and down the floor. Um, anything around the rim, he's obviously more than capable of dunking it. Um, where his uh, learning curve is obviously the language barrier uh, sometimes and just getting up to speed with terminology and, and uh, how mm -hmm. Coach Frank wants to operate. To the guard position, mm -hmm. you got a guy coming in from the West Coast mm -hmm. out of Anaheim Veritas Academy, mm -hmm. Mark Keyworthy. Mm -hmm. From what I think fans have seen of him so far just on social media, got a yeah. physicality to him, huh? Well, again, I mean, he's a high school kid, but yeah. he's very mature uh, physically, but also mentally, you know, even, even as a, a person. You know, he's a kid that when you sit down and you talk with him, um, no disrespect to the other guys, but he's like talking to another adult, you know, at the end of the day. He carries himself uh, in that manner. Um, I think uh, he comes from a very good program at Veritas. Um, uh, Coach George and Coach Eli have done a great job uh, in getting them prepared, and I think he's taken uh, a good step over the summer, not only in the weight room, but just even on the court. Um, I definitely believe he has some leadership qualities within him, even as an uh, a incoming guy. But I'm excited to see uh, what the season and, and the future holds for him. It can certainly be tough for programs now having to deal with so much change. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you've got a guy uh, as well coming in who yeah. was committed to another team in the A-10. Yes. And they had coaching change, and now yeah. he's here at UMass and Tariq Foster, yeah. six foot eight freshman. Yeah. What skill set does he provide? Well, again, he's, he's another one of those kids that, you know, God has blessed him yeah. with that size, that mobility, that athleticism, um, ability to shoot the basketball, actually a little better off the bounce than what you would think. Uh, frame um, obviously has to get better. I think he's done a great job with Tony in the weight room and obviously again, campus and, and getting three meals plus a day in him is going to be very uh, helpful for him. And again, I think this summer, but also the trip over to Puerto Rico should uh, help his development as well because I believe he has a high ceiling um, and what type of player he can uh, become. Coach, thanks so much. We look oh, forward to seeing you year two on the sidelines. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. All right, that is Associate yeah. Head Coach yeah. Alan Edwards. How about this for the incoming players? There are still three guys returning here to UMass, including Keon Thompson, mm -hmm. and we were able to catch up with him at the Basketball Hall of Fame. So what's it like to be at the Hall of Fame here? Um, it feels great. Uh, you know, you get to see all these iconic moments in basketball history. So it feels pretty good to, as a basketball player to look up to some of these moments. Was there a guy that's maybe here in the Hall of Fame that you look up to as a kid? Um, I like MJ, LeBron, uh, some of the more common iconic people in history. So, you know, I kind of made me, made me my game around them. How do you take what you did last year as a true freshman and add to that for your sophomore season? Um, just take the experience out of it. Take all the, uh, the ups and downs and turn it into learning lessons for next year. Um, just be better, you know, 
improve myself night in and night out. Is there something that the coaching staff has challenged you to, to work on or, or to improve upon from one um, year to the next? Just being a leader, uh, being someone who someone can be uh, accountable for, uh, make sure that everybody else is being accounted, and making sure the guys can hear my voice and just lead the way. Is part of that being vocal, speaking up? Yeah, being vocal, you know, um, taking charge by actions, of course, but mostly vocalness. You've been able to, in a brief amount of time, get to know some of the new guys. A lot of freshmen that were in your position a year ago. What have you learned about this incoming group? Um, they're special. Uh, yeah. They're highly skilled. You know, they have a feel for the game. You know, it's just it's going to take time. You know, getting in that college moment, college speed. But um, no, nah, they're they're pretty good, and I'm kind of I'm really excited to play with them. Lastly, for you here, you guys have Puerto Rico trip. You guys have been together doing things in the community here in Western Massachusetts. So, is that helping this team kind of learn about each other and get to know each other? Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's really about team bonding right now. Um, you know, just kind of getting to know each other, talk to each other. You know, you know, during the season it can be ups and downs. You know, guys can be a lot busy with class and stuff. So, you know, taking this off time to really get to know each other and like build that bond with each other so when the season comes, you know, we should be straight. Keon, thanks so much. Good Thank luck this you. summer. Right? Appreciate it. Thank you. And back with you one final time on our UMass Men's Basketball Summer Special. We've got the newest addition of the coaching staff with us here, assistant coach Brett Nelson joining us. Brett, thanks for taking the time. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Great to be here. You are one of everybody on the staff who's actually played for head coach Frank Martin. Before we get into the players we're going to talk about, what has your experience been like playing for him and now working with him on staff? Yeah, it's great to be back, you know, connected with, 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 with Coach. Um, it's crazy how this basketball world, you know, comes full circle. Uh, I think it was 1996 um, I played AAU with, with, with Coach. And now sitting here in 2023, we're back together. But, uh, you know, I've been here about six weeks, and it's, it's been really, really good, you one know, of, being with the staff, being with Coach, being with these players. You know, one of the themes we're talking about on the show is you've got a lot of new faces, right, a lot of young faces. So yeah. let's start there with Robert Davis Jr., I think a face that a lot of fans have already seen yeah. on social media. Tell us about him and what you've seen from him so far. I know it's very early, obviously, in terms of uh, getting to know these players. Yeah, first off, as a, as a group, you know, uh, these guys have been in the gym. I think we have a group of young guys who've come in here hungry, uh, ready to work. Um, and Rob fits right in that mold. Um, you know, I'm still getting a feel for everyone. But I think with, with Robert, you know, his size, his ability to stretch a defense and shoot the basketball, um, I think he has a really, really bright future. He has um, certainly put himself out there in terms of his ability to shoot the basketball. Mm -hmm. Where is that level that you've seen from him in terms of being able to let it fly? Yeah, obviously we haven't played a game. Right. The lights haven't been on. Uh, but, you know, in drills, in practice, he's definitely been a guy who's consistently, you know, made shots, which, which, which is a great thing because to me, shooting is a great separator. It's a great equalizer, especially with the way the game's played today. Um, you can never have enough shooting. And plus, you know, it's not like he's, he's five foot ten. You know, he's got size. It's, you know, six four, six five, And, you know, uh, he's got good length. Speaking of length, six foot ten, Massachusetts yeah. product, Sawyer Mayhew, coming out of a great, uh, a great prep school at Brewster Academy in, in New Hampshire. You know, what ability or skill set do you see from, from Sawyer, or at least what maybe his potential could be? Yeah, I, I think Sawyer, and a lot, like a lot of these guys, he's just scratching the surface of who he's going to be as a player. You know, I think he's got a great work ethic. I think physically, you know, he is put together as a freshman where he's going to be able to come in and physically compete, which isn't the case for a lot of freshmen. You know, they come in, they're, you know, a little light, they're, they're, they're skinny, and, and he, that's not him. You know, so he's done a great job of building his body. Um, I, I think he's another guy like Rob that can really stretch the defense. At six foot nine, six foot ten, um, he's shown the ability to, to, to shoot the three ball, and, you know, we're going to need that for sure. You, of course, with your recent history at Holy Cross, know recruiting the state mm -hmm. of Massachusetts very well. Another Mass guy you've got coming in out of the Rivers School, an all Nepsack player, Jaden and Gige. Mm -hmm. You know, how does he kind of fit in there at 6'4", 190 coming into to UMass? Yeah, I think one of the greatest compliments you can give a guy is that he's a winner. Okay, and you look back at this guy's history, whether it's AAU, whether it's at the River School, whatever it is, he's played on winning teams. So I think that's, that's, that's a big deal right there. 
Second thing, I think he's going to be able to come in and make a huge impact on our program is on the defensive end. Yeah. Uh, his ability to get in a stance, sit down, guard the basketball. Um, I think he has an understanding of off-ball positioning, which a lot of freshmen don't when they walk in the door. Um, and then I think he's a, he's a great competitor. Um, you know, sometimes you know guys look at different things, but uh, when I when I hear the word winner and I watch that, when I see the word competitor. And then when I see a guy that takes pride in guarding the basketball, to me, that guy's going to find a niche on any team. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Looking forward to seeing you in action. Yeah, great. Thanks, right, man. That is Appreciate Coach it. Brett Nelson. Thanks to all of our coaches and guests today. That'll do it for us on the summer special. Don't forget, season tickets for UMass basketball are on sale now. We'll see you at the Moment Center.